Good day and welcome traders. In this video today, I'm going to be talking about the bank's strategy. You will learn in this trading the core essence of supply and demand, the institution's blueprint psychology, a foolproof game plan strategy, the two best supply and demand setups, and how to enter the zones risk free. Make sure to watch the whole video. This strategy is most effective if you follow every step. I'm going to be sharing with you a secret pattern that I've never revealed before in my videos. This specific video is going to be one of the most value packed videos I've created up to date. So make sure to watch the whole video to get all the benefits. Before we begin, make sure to smash that subscribe button. If you want to become a consistently profitable trader at supply and demand's core, it is an exchange of assets between buyers and sellers at specific price points. Why are they exchanging? Because they believe they're going to win and benefit in the deal. So at the core of supply and demand, it's all about belief. Belief is actually what drives the market and not price. I'll give you more info. The law of supply and demand trading when supply increases and demand decreases, that is when the price falls. That is when the supply zones are filled with liquidity and sell orders. When supply decreases and demand increases, the price rises. That is when demand zones are filled with liquidity of buy orders. We are looking for high volume liquidity zones to base our trades off of. You might just want to have to pause and have a look at this in more detail. But this is basically the setup of order blocks and how they work. So at the top, we've got the supply zone order block. This is when we're selling the market. This is when price is overbought. Supply increases, demand decreases. Less buyers, more sellers. Saturation in the market. The price is falling. And these are represented by the red indecision candle. On the opposite side here, we've got buyers in the markets. It represents the demand zone order block. It's oversold regions. Supply decreases, demand increases, less sellers, more buyers, scarcity in the markets, price rises. So these are all the key elements that represent supply zones and demand zones. Demand zone is represented by the green indecision candle. These are both representations at the core of supply and demand trading. When you have indecision in the market, it is a sign that price is at a reset point. And that is why we are attuning ourselves to notice these indecision candles, specifically at these order block zones. How can a person manipulate the balance of supply and demand? If you have something that you're selling, you have the supply of that one thing. And if there's a high demand for it, the price goes up. But if you're selling something that everyone is selling and there's low demand, the price goes down. The key to understanding supply and demand is how can it be manipulated? How can a person manipulate the balance of the supply and demand? And the answer to that is simply when you bend a person's belief. What would happen if you were tricked to believe the opposite of what was going to happen? You would buy instead of sell. You would sell instead of buy. Sound familiar? You would always be losing. You would always be making the wrong decisions you would always be on the wrong side of the market. Trading is a game of psychology and belief, and the banks know this. In order to win, you have to do the opposite of what the mass market is doing. You have to supply to the retailer and not buy with the retailer. So it takes a little bit of a shift in your psychology. You have to trade like the banks trade. You have to think like the institutions. What if you were trading with $100 million? How would you need to trade? It would be very different from how a retailer trades. Traders like you and I don't move the market. The big institutions move the market. Your strategy is to forecast what the institution's best play is going to be and then ride along with them. They are the whales and we are the little sucker fish. We follow in the whale's slipstream. We have to make sure we are in alignment with the institutions. If you are responsible to trade huge amounts of money that move the market, you would have one main objective, getting your trades filled at favorable price points. You would not want anyone to know your plan because it would be more difficult to accumulate profitable positions 
and distribute them. Think about that. If you knew there was a great deal coming up, you wouldn't tell anyone this deal because then everyone would want to buy it and the price would go up, would become more expensive. So you would quietly buy this asset without letting anyone know. They need willing takers to liquidate effectively. If everyone knows what they're planning and trying to do the same thing, they won't be able to liquidate effectively. You see, the key to all of this is price is going to follow the path of least resistance always. This is usually the path most traders won't think will happen. And that is where you will find your edge. More examples of how the banks do their trading. See, what happens is you have large players. They must trade on a model of accumulation and distribution to be profitable. They accumulate their orders. And then when price goes down, the profits are collected by the banks from the distribution of buy orders in a down trending market. On the other hand, the banks accumulate their buy orders over here in these contraction phases. When price moves into the trending phase, profits are collected by the banks from the distribution of sell orders in an uptrending market. Here's an example of the bank's accumulation and distribution strategy. Over here, strong holders accumulate buy positions from weak holders. And over here, strong holders liquidate buy positions to the weak holders for profit. You see, so money is transferred from the strong holders to the weak holders. And in this setup over here, we've got three phases. Phase one, supply and demand are temporary balanced. We go into this contraction phase. And this is where the market reset point occurs and a perfect place for the institutions to form their battle plan. They're deciding whether they're going to drive the market into a buy or sell sentiment. Then they start accumulating buy positions over here. And this is the second phase. Supply comes into the market. Positions are accumulated by the strong holders for later distribution, filling inventory with positions. Then over here, the strongholders liquidate the buy positions, goes into phase three. Demand comes into the market and positions are liquidated by the strongholders for profits. They liquidate their positions to the retailers and those who are suffering from FOMO. So you can see it goes into this contraction zone. They reset the market and then all of a sudden price expands below liquidates, expands above liquidates and they are accumulating buy positions at all the lowest points. And then when the retailer gets involved and drives the mark higher, that is when they liquidate the buy positions to the retailers for profit. Pro tip guys, your number one priority as a retail trader in analyzing the market is to understand how banks and other large institutions are competing for liquidity with each other. Your number one objective is to emulate their trading behavior. Your strategy should be to figure out where institutions would need to get in and out of the market based on their liquidity needs. Since the banks drive the markets, if we want to become profitable, we have to know how they trade. We have to trade side by side with him, which means we must understand how the banks trade. Indecision is the key that I found. Indecision candles are where the banks are planning their next move. And this is the start of the market phases. So how do we become more sure? We need to understand the first phase of the markets. And guys, this is my secret pattern that I want to reveal to you all. This is going to change the way you look at the graphs, change the way you trade. You want to pay close attention to when you see simultaneous higher low and lower high. As you can see, price moves like this. This is the higher low. This is the lower high. This is called a contraction phase. It is when price starts squeezing. This lets you know that the market is moving into the first phase. Here's another example. Price consolidates and then you see the squeeze into this contraction box. We draw a box around it. It's the reset point in the market where the banks plan their next move usually forms indecision candles. What happens is price goes into this contraction phase, then it expands out, liquidates everyone, expands down, liquidates everyone again. I call this the whipsaw. And then it only decides on what direction it wants to move in. I'm going to briefly cover the three phases now, just briefly, but I want to focus on the first phase. I've got another set of videos coming up where I'm going to focus on the expansion phase and the trending phase. So make sure to subscribe to watch those and stay tuned. After the contraction phase, number one, comes the expansion phase and then the trending phase. 
As you can see, price goes into consolidation and we get the squeeze. We notice the low high and high low. We mark out the contraction phase. Now we know that the banks are going into a reset and this is where they're starting to plan their move. Then when price breaks out, it goes into the expansion. It expands up, breaks the highs, expands down, breaks the lows. So it liquidates all the people who have orders at the highs and lows. And that is why liquidity is always formed at equal highs and equal lows. So phase two breaks equal highs, breaks equal lows, liquidates before it sets its mind on which direction to move in. And that becomes the third phase, which is the trending phase. We want to stay out of phase one and two only focus on number three, supply and demand core principle. So as you can see, I'm on a Bitcoin chart. And what I've done is I'm on the four hour. I've marked out all the indecision candles, which are at these points and breaks of structure. And as you can see over here, each zone is represented by an indecision candle. We've got the supply zone here, indecision candle, demand zone, indecision, demand zone, supply zone. The indecision candles are the points where the banks are about to make a move. You can see here, we've got this contraction point I've marked out here, then this massive move, this contraction point, then this massive move. It's super important to mark out these contraction zones because you can anticipate a move before it even occurs. If we'd marked out this zone beforehand, we could have anticipated this drop and the same over here. But what we do is we mark out these zones based on these indecision candles and these become liquidity trading zones. These are the zones we want to mark out on a chart, wait for price to come into these zones and then start looking for entries. Okay, guys, this is the game plan strategy section we're going into now. This is an easy three-step formula to trade supply and demand. Step number one, we're looking for higher time frame displacements. Step number two, higher time frame point of interest zone. And step number three, entry confirmations. Number one, high time frame displacement. So we're looking for strong high time frame displacement, ignoring the trend and just looking for these breaks in structures. So as you can see, I've marked out the contraction zones and then we get this massive displacement explosion over here. Breaks a very big structure and this lets us know institutions have arrived and these are the zones we want to mark out. The two best setups we're going to focus on for this strategy are drop based rally setups and rally based drops. So as you can see price drops, we have this base and then a rally. Over here we've got a rally base and drop setup. So you want to focus on these ones because these are two setups that are not really reliant on the trend direction at all. The key is to notice this massive displacement down which shows that there's extreme volume pushing to the downside. If we see a base which is a contraction zone then we look for this expansion out the zone which is showing displacements. We mark out the zone and we take an entry at the zone that was created from this displacement. And as you can see the same thing happened. Massive rally here, a lot of volume in the market contraction phase then price bursts out into the expansion phase leaves behind an order block comes back taps into that and that's where we get our confirmation entry with supply and demand most of the time you don't need a trend direction price usually ping pongs through these levels especially from strong zone to zone if you are good at identifying strong zones a trend direction is not necessary as long as you know where the liquidity is. So as you can see here, massive displacements. We leave an indecision candle, mark out that indecision candle and price respects it perfectly. We've got displacement over here. We've actually got rally, base, rally, indecision candle with all these wicks. I mark out that zone. Price comes, dips back in here and you can see it leaves another indecision candle here. Indecision candles are signs of reversal. If you're trading block to block, the overall trend is not that important. What's important is finding the strong displacement. This is probably one of the most important things to identify is displacement. It shows there's movement in the market, there's buyers and sellers who are active, there's money in the market. As we can see we've got this displacement, break of structure, leaves behind the zone, price comes up, taps into the zone, there's an indecision candle there and price reverses. Same thing happens over here, this massive displacement, break structure, we get a change in character, it leaves behind a nice little zone, mark out the zone, price comes, dips into perfect, and we take a confirmation entry right over here. Number two, points of interest. We're looking for higher time frame supply and demand zones. How we determine the, the strength of the zone is the displacement, the momentum moving away from the zone. We get the contraction phase 
and then we get this displacement, which shows there's volume in the markets. We mark out the indecision candles or the last buy candle before the up move, the last sell candle before the down move. These become our zones that we stretch out. Here is an example. So over here, we had this massive displacement. It left behind this higher time frame zone. We marked it out on the 30 minutes. And this becomes our point of interest. We know that there's liquidity here because of the displacement and the order block that was left behind. Maybe it was an indecision candle or it was an engulfing candle and possibly even an imbalance left behind. So we mark out this zone. We wait for price to come back into the zone and mitigate the zone. And then we wait for a confirmation entry. Number three, entry confirmations. We're either going to enter from a lower time frame change in character, engulfing candles, or indecision candles. Lower time frame change in character. As you can see, price is going down, creating lower low, lower low, and this is the lower high. As soon as it breaks above the lower high and creates a higher high, this is when the change of character is formed. In order for it to break this structure, there's momentum. It leaves behind an order block. We mark it on the lower time frame. This becomes our entry zone. Same thing on a bearish change of character. Price is going up, higher high, higher low, higher high, higher low, higher high. And then we have our first lower low. Break structure, we get this change in character. It usually happens with momentum, it breaks the structure, leaves behind a nice lower time frame order block. We wait for our confirmation entry over here. Another way we can enter is on engulfing candles. So as you can see, price comes back to the zone and we get this very big bullish candle, which is an engulfing candle, it engulfs the candle before it. This is a strong sign that there are buyers present and we can take an entry just from the top of the candle, stop loss, the bottom of the zone. He has a more of a close up. It's a massive momentum candle with the wick to the downside, showing rejection to the downside. Could take our entry right over here, stop loss at the bottom of the zone. Another example of these engulfing or momentum candles. Price comes up, taps into our zone. Then we get this massive engulfing candle, engulfs the candle before it, showing that there's selling pressure. The sellers are here. It's also, there's also an indecision candle over here, which is stronger confirmation. We could have entered right over here with our stop loss at the bottom of the zone. Closer example, price taps into our zone. We could have just entered off this indecision candle because that would have been a strong enough signal. But then we see this momentum candle. This could have been the second confirmation to enter. Another example, price breaks structure with these momentum candles, massive momentum down, changing character, breaking structure. We mark out the indecision zone over here. This becomes our point of interest. When price comes back into our zone, we see an engulfing momentum candle react off the zone. It's the confirmation entry. Price taps in. We don't enter right away. We wait for the confirmation. We see this massive bearish engulfing candle. We can enter right underneath the candle stop loss above the highest wick here. And you can see there's another indecision candle left, which could have been our second confirmation. So here's a quick summary of everything. We look for displacements, break structs with change in character on the higher time frame. We mark out the higher time frame order block, 30 minute I've got here. When price comes into our higher time frame zone, then we go to a lower time frame and we wait for a change of character. It breaks the structure and leaves behind a five minute order block, which becomes our confirmation entry. Price taps in, mitigates, breaks structure, changes of character over here. We'll usually see displacement and imbalances. We mark out the zone, which is usually indecision candle or the last bullish candle before the bearish drop. We mark out that zone, wait for price to come tap into that zone, and this becomes our confirmation entry. Thank you for watching this video, guys. I trust you got a lot of value and enjoyed it a lot. If you would like to learn more about supply and demand, click on this link that's going to pop up right now into a supply and demand course I've created. Have a beautiful day.